The objectives for this module are explain the importance of aligning teaching and learning with goals and objectives, demonstrate appropriate selection of instructional setting and delivery, demonstrate appropriate selection of learning activities, demonstrate selection of resources to support learning, and demonstrate appropriate sequencing of learning activities. Review Addy. Be sure that you have a working knowledge. In the analysis process, you craft the aims, goals, and objectives. From the goals and objectives, the content and sequence are determined. Be sure you have a working knowledge of the analysis process. Review Blooms. Be sure that you have a working knowledge. Review Writing, Learning, Objectives, and Domains of Knowledge. Be sure you have a working knowledge. The instructional setting should be identified first prior to the development of goals and objectives and content. This is because each setting has benefits and limitations as to which type of content can be delivered effectively. The classroom is appropriate when large groups must be taught the same content, a high degree of learner and or instructor interaction is required, Content for learning is highly contextual and cannot be designed and delivered as standalone unit or module. Training cannot occur on the job or in the field. It is essential that learners must be able to perform upon job or task entry. And learning and practice require specialized facilities or equipment. The classroom is typically used for a traditional course, workshop, conference setting, hobby instruction, personal improvement classes, or seminars. Online delivery is most often used when a large group must be taught the same content, face-to-face -face learner interaction is not required, close supervision of learning is not required, a task can be self-learned or learner demonstrates a high degree of self-directed learning, content for learning can be designed and delivered as standalone units or modules, Learning and practice does not require specialized facilities or equipment. Training cannot occur on the job or in the field. And it is essential that learners must be able to perform on, upon the job task and entry. An online delivery of learning or training is used for traditional online courses, professional development, e-learning, hobby instruction, or personal improvement courses. Learning or training instruction is delivered on the job when an individual or small group must be taught the same content. Learning requires a longer specified period of time for skill practice and acquisition. A high degree of learner and or instructor interaction is required. Close supervision is required. Task or still skill decay rate is high. Learning and practice requires specialized facilities or equipment and training is not disruptive to the business operation. This type of instruction is appropriate for employee orientations, work processes, equipment training, or customer service type training. Mentoring or coaching is used when an individual or small group must be taught the same content. Learning requires a longer specified period of time for skill practice and acquisition. A high degree of learner and or instructor interaction is required. Close supervision is not required. Learners have some basic skill and knowledge, but need expert guidance to increase performance. And learning and practice may or may not require specialized facilities or equipment. Mentoring and coaching is effective for athletics, fitness training, career coaching, behavior management, and parenting classes. Not all learning or training requires an instructor. Performance aids such as manuals, videos, online tutorials, and step-by-step -step guides can be effective for teaching certain kinds of tasks or delivering information. Performance aids can be effective when the individual or group must be taught the same content, the task follows a set procedure, workflow, or contains information that does not need to be memorized. The performance aid can be followed while performing the task. A high degree of learner and or instructor interaction is not required and close supervision is not required. Some other considerations for how to deliver training include how long will it take, 
Should content be chunked? What size audience is appropriate? Is the learning generic? Is the learning global? Is learning regional? What equipment and facilities are required? What resources are necessary? What services, if any, are required? This slide provides a practice opportunity. Review the scenario. What observations do you make in regards to needs analysis, learning needs, target audience, learning goals and objectives, and instructional setting? This slide provides a practice opportunity. Review the scenario. What observations do you make in regards to needs analysis, learning needs, target audience, learning goals, and objectives, and instructional setting? Learning objectives are different than program goals and objectives. Program goals and objectives state what the goals of the program are. Learning goals are specific to the instructional activities the learner engages in. Some planners follow these steps to help them craft specific and measurable objectives. Note the steps for creating the final objective. This slide provides a practice opportunity. Following the example presented on the previous slide, improve the learning objectives presented here on this slide. Now we need to talk about design. From the goals and objectives, the content and sequence are determined. Review the suggestions for how to deliver content and information in the pre-instructional phase. Review the suggestions for how to deliver content and information in the instructional phase. Review the suggestions for how to structure and deliver information during the post-instructional phase. Gagney's work on the nine events and strategies in instruction are useful for designing instruction during the pre-instructional, instructional, and post-instructional phases. Massive amounts of information is very difficult for your brain to absorb and comprehend. However, your brain can contain unlimited amounts of information. The trick is to feed your brain knowledge in small chunks. To improve your brain's comprehension of the information, you must organize it into some logical sequence. When designing a training program, this concept applies as well. As you compile information and analyze the data, you should attempt to find logical sequences within the materials. A tool to help you sequence information is mind mapping. Mind mapping is a technique used to organize information. This process takes information and organizes it into smaller blocks of information. For example, you need to develop a course on how to bake a cake. Using mind mapping techniques, you break down the concept of baking a cake into three segments, identifying ingredients, mixing ingredients, and baking the ingredients. Now that you have identified the segments or chunks of information, you need to determine which sequence or segment must come first. Obviously, identifying ingredients should come first, while baking the ingredients comes last. This example may be simplistic in nature, however, the same principles apply to more complex topics. Organizing and planning the sequence of the content delivery is vital. This type of planning allows the instructor to be aware of the end goals of a learning segment. When the instructor can plan what is intended to happen during each lesson, they're able to make the transitions between lessons as smooth as possible. This will benefit the students as well since they will be able to be better prepared to absorb new material when it is presented in an orderly manner. Clear end goals and sequenced lessons allow instructors to anticipate difficulties in problem areas and scaffold instruction. Additional support, such as specific exercises and activities, can be provided to assist students to meet the challenge of more difficult concepts. The instructor can scaffold the subject matter so that as the task grow more complex and difficult, the students will have more resources and insight to draw upon in order that they meet the challenge successfully. 
Designers and instructors build learning activities that will give the learners real experience with the skills they need to perform rather than simply telling and showing them information. Activities are participative learning experiences such as exercises, role plays, games, simulations, and reflective surveys that allow the learners to practice and reflect in order to master a skill. Storytelling and group discussions are also great learning activities as they promote social learning. Use the instructional strategies list to help you incorporate learning activities into your program. Content must have significance and validity. When choosing content, consideration is given to how essential or basic it is to the discipline. Instructors check to make sure that the content is accurate, current, and relevant to the aims and intended learning outcomes. Content should be relevant and have utility. Instructors would question the discipline, workplace, or societal value of the content. Instructors would also want to know how useful the content will be to learners beyond the confines of the topic or course. Will it benefit them in real life and or professional practice? Finally, the interest or learnability of the material should be considered. Will this content interest the students? Will the students be able to learn the content in the time available? Course design research states that content must also meet other criteria as listed on this slide. After including activities into your outline, you need to consider the length of time required to present the materials. Timing involves more than just determining how long it takes to present a block of instruction. Timing includes everything required to complete the training. As you develop your outline, consider the following items as part of your outline. Breaks. Breaks are an important part of the learning process as your audience needs that time to refresh their minds. Try to incorporate a 10 to 15 minute break every one to two hours. An important concept to consider is when training is more lecture oriented, participants require more breaks. When training is more activity based, participants need less breaks. Lunches. If applicable, ensure that you schedule lunches in your outline. On average, lunches are an hour long. As you begin to develop your outline, lunches will consume valuable time. However, it is an important piece of the learning process. Introductions, welcome, and wrap-ups. Introductions, welcoming presentations, and end of day our wrap-ups take time to implement. Therefore, your outline should include these, these items as well. You don't have to create everything by scratch. Check for existing content, such as from colleagues in your department, other organizations or entities, online, similar training or courses, professional associations, textbooks, or manuals in the discipline and discussions with subject matter experts. Best practices for organizing and sequencing content include build interest and introduce new content before delving too deeply. Place easy activities before demanding ones. Maintain a good mix of activity. Group together concepts and skills that build on each other. Provide sub-skills before practicing concept skills. And close learning sequences with discussions of so what and now what. This slide provides a practice opportunity. Review the scenario. What learning goals would you craft for the training? What kind of activities would you select for the training? What content would you select to support the training? Develop an outline for sequencing.